Hi everyone, it's Paul, W2PAK. Today we're going to talk about common mode chokes for antenna systems. We're going to talk about why you need one, we're going to talk about how they work, we're going to build one, and we're going to test them. Come join me. So this is an example of an ideal antenna system. This is an example of a dipole with the two wires. The transceiver produces I1, and uh, of course I1 needs to be balanced with I2 because this is a balanced system. And in the ideal case, what happens is the coax delivers the uh, power to the antenna, and then half goes one way, half goes the other way. And as we said, I1 needs to equal I2, and uh, there's no problem. Now, as we know, life is not ideal, and the real world looks more like this. So, in the real world, what happens is, yeah, you'll have I1, say, in, in one part of the uh, dipole antenna, and I2 will actually cluster on the inside of the coax because of the skin effect. So, I1 goes one way, I2 goes the, another way, but what happens is you also have common mode current, which is on the outside of the uh, coax. And so when on the outside of the coax you have I3, suddenly you have an unbalanced system where I4 in one of the arms of a dipole is going to be I2 minus I3. And so that creates an unbalanced system, and it causes all kinds of trouble, both on the receive and the transmit side. So on the transmit side, we have a problem because what it does is it, it basically changes the antenna system. And like I said, it becomes unbalanced. W0IVJ was kind enough to, to allow me to use uh, some of his uh, simulations here. And you can look him up if you're interested in more information. But what he did is he took a three-element Yagi, and uh, he simulated it with and without a ballon. So when he says ballon, he means a common mode choke. So with a common mode choke, for instance, you can see that the radiation pattern here in the, in the uh, black is what we expect. A very nice front-to-back to ratio. Um, pretty much uh, it's a simulation, so it's perfect in terms of the radiation pattern. But if we do a simulation without a common mode choke, you can see that we lose here, it's about 2 dB actually, but also we get, you know, the back side is not as good as it was with the common mode choke. So for the transmit side, one of the mechanisms that makes this antenna pattern a little bit changed with or without a common mode choke is without a common mode choke, what happens is the wave is, of course, going to go down this arm, and there is some reflection. And the reflection, instead of going inside like I2, it's going to go on the outside, and it's going to combine with I3. So that is one of the mechanisms that changes I3 on the transmit side. On the receive side, of course, you have all kinds of RF coming in, RFI, etc., and that ends up going on the outside, and that adds to I3, which, of course, on the receive side, the transceiver is going to see. So how do we solve this problem? Well, one way to solve the problem is to put a common mode choke between these two. And the idea of a common mode choke is to allow I1 and I2 to pass through while choking I3. And so let's see how we're going to do that. Okay, so this diagram is not super accurate, but that's not the point here. The point here is to try to understand how a common mode choke works. So let's remember that we have I1 in one of the uh, conductors, and then we have I2 and I3 on the other one. Remember, I3 is on the outside of the sleeve, and I2 is on the inside. So... The idea here is we want to pass I1, this is a current, it's called a current transformer, and I2, but we don't want to pass I3. So the way we do this is this. I1 goes in and it will create a flux here. And that flux, we'll call it flux 1, will go say this way. I2 will come in and create another flux in the opposite direction. We're going to call this a 
reflux too, and they cancel each other out. So if there's no flux in the toroid and the ferrite, there's no inductance because inductance equals to flux over current. And zero flux, zero inductance. Now, what happens is this, that the I3 creates a flux, let's say like this, but there's no I3 here, so now we have flux, we have flux, we have inductance. So if we have, say, flux 3, we're going to have L3 equals flux 3 over the current, and what's going to happen is the reactance, XL, is J omega L. And now we have ourselves some reactants. Now, this is a 50 ohm system, and it turns out that when you design these things, you want the reactants to be on the order of thousands of ohms. And now you have a really nice attenuation, and I3 is not going to go through here, and you're left with I1 and I2. Sorry, the directions here are supposed to be opposite. So that is the way this works. I hope this was clear. Now we're going to go to the workshop and uh, see if we can build one of these things. So we're in the workshop and uh, we're going to build a common moat choke. We have the uh, toroid here, the ferrite toroid. And uh, this is a little table. You can see that uh, the FT140s, basically the 140 signifies kind of the power. So the 140s are the lesser powers. And then the FT240s are higher powers. And uh, this is an FT140. And uh, the suffix here is the mix. And so the mix dictates what uh, frequency range uh, this can cover. So this is an FT14031. And so this is perfect for HF. What I'm trying to build for me right now is I want to make a little um, common mode choke for, say, a couple hundred watts. And... I want to use it uh, probably for a vertical antenna like on the beach or maybe a dipole antenna, you know, portable kind of situation. Now, I'm going to be using RG316, and that is this coax. And the reason I chose this one is, A, if you look at the table, it can handle up to 200 watts, and B, it's, it really can hug the toroid. It's really important that when you make these windings that it is tight. And uh, thicker coax just won't cut it. So I'm using this coax um, for that purpose. And then I'm going to put this into a little box, a little project box. I have a couple uh, of U uh, UHF connectors. And that's basically the project. It's pretty simple to do. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so we're going to do that. Now, if you want to do a little bit more power, you can see, so like a 18 gauge, you know, with maybe an FT240. You can do it this way uh, and if you use just non-coax cable, so, you know, regular 18, 16 gauge cable, what you can do is make sure you get two different colors. You can take two pairs and uh, basically you wind them on one side and then you wind the other pair on the other side. Just make sure that the windings follow each other. That's very important. So if it starts from going underneath the toroid, go, go from underneath the toroid on both of the pairs, and then it should end up, say, on the top of the toroid when you're, when you're done winding. So this would be, say, a, maybe a higher power kind of situation where you're going to use higher gauge wire to make a uh, common mode choke. So I'm going to wind this. I'm not going to bore you with winding, and then uh, I'll be back and show you the final uh, product. All right, so I, I wound this thing. There are 10 turns here. Um, each turn, a turn is when it goes through the center of the toroid. So I did one, two, three, four, five, and then this one goes up and to the other side. I don't know if you can see it, up and to the other side, and then six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I put two little zip ties here to keep it nice and uh, sturdy. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it in a box. I'm going to put connectors on each side and then let's test this. Let's see how this works. 
here we have it. So basically, this is the wound uh, ferrite toroid and um, connected to, to UHF. I put a little bit of um, black RTV on the bottom here just to tack it down. And uh, I'm going to close it up and let's test this. Let's see how this performs. Before I start testing, we're going to calibrate the VNA. And if I go to calibrate and through, and I have my cables that are going to be connected to the common mode choke, I have them basically in a throughput. There's, they're basically connected from port 1 to port 2. And you can see now everything is 0 dB. So now I'm going to put our device and we're going to see what the insertion loss of the device is. So I know you remember that uh, I1 and I2 are not supposed to be attenuated, and you can see that the insertion loss is 0 0.1 dB. So connected like this, from just input to output with two coaxes, there's really no loss in this uh, common mode choke. It's very small. And what we're going to do next is we're going to check to see what kind of attenuation this has uh, for the that I3 we were talking about for that common mode uh, current. So this is the, really the attenuation of the common mode current. You can see that at 80 meters it's we'll call it minus 29 dB and it goes up to minus 22 dB at 10 meters. Really good rejection. Very very nice. This common mode choke is working very well. So the last thing I want to do is I want to look at the noise floor with and without the common mode choke. You can see that the noise floor here is probably around S4. This is 15 meters connected to a 15 meter vertical antenna. It's just a wire. And uh, this is without the common mode choke. Now I'm going to put the common mode choke and let's see what it looks like. What a huge difference. S0. Just, just about going to maybe S0.5. Uh, very nice uh, noise floor, really quiet right now on the 15 meter band with a common mode choke. I think this is a good demonstration on how a common mode choke can really take care of uh, noise. Uh, and I love it when the theory and the practice uh, mesh. Common mode chokes are very important for antenna systems. I hope you found this video informative. I had a lot of fun making it. For more content, please hit subscribe. 73, my friends.